Hey, this is Scott Duffy Bonsai too. We're gonna look at this Nikon Coolpix P1000. Thanks to Cameracraft in Rockford, Illinois for letting me try this out at their shop. This camera is a bridge camera, but it is a very, very extreme bridge camera. It has a 125X, basically 24 to 3000 millimeter equivalent lens in there. That's the biggest selling point of this camera. The lens goes from f2.8 to f8 throughout that zoom range. It does have the optical image stabilization, which is a real necessity in this case. On the other hand, this camera has a 60 megapixel, 1 over 2.3 inch backlit CMOS sensor. That is one of the smallest sensors that are in any type of dedicated camera these days. Some of the other features, body-wise, it does have a fully articulating screen that's very nice to see. A smaller battery, around 250 shots per charge rating. It's alright, but it is one of the lowest of this type of bridge camera. There is a lot of glass to move when you zoom in and out. I do think they should have put a larger battery in there. Video-wise, it's nice to see that there is 4K recording. You also have some higher frames per second modes. To round the video off, you do have 1080p at a maximum of 60 frames a second and clean HDMI output, so you could potentially record from the camera that way. A few additional features, there is peaking on the camera. I see this as a very useful feature even with an integrated lens like this because it does have a nice large ring on the front that you can use to adjust manual focus. With videos like this, I don't have a huge amount of time to test out the camera. So with things like autofocus, I say try to find the camera and test it out for yourself, see how it works. I tried the autofocus out quite a bit, it was all indoors, and I did go to the maximum zoom. There is some hunting, it's not perfect, but it seems alright in most situations, especially in that lower light situation, it was okay. The biggest thing I like to talk about is handling of the camera. This is a very large camera, it's solid feeling, it feels more solid than the B500 that I tried from Nikon of course. There's a big price difference with these two cameras, but this one feels really good in the hands. The grip is nice and large. But depending on your hand size, it might be a little too large. But for me, it worked really well. Ergonomics feel good. It's very similar to DSLRs. But in relation to the buttons, you have a special feature with these Nikon bridge cameras. And it is included. It's called Snapback Zoom. You have a special button that if you're zoomed out, you press that button. It zooms a wider angle view for you to kind of gauge where you are in the scene. And it helps out a lot with these extremely long zoom lenses. A few more things about handling. It does have a tripod socket of course. However, I think it's in an odd position. It's all the way in the back where the camera is. That's a very standard spot for normal cameras. But in this situation with this extremely long large lens on the front. I really think they should have moved that tripod socket forward enough so it's more balanced. When you zoom all the way, it's very front heavy. Even if it's on a tripod where it's connected, I didn't get a chance to try it out, but I could see a little bit of issue with shake and vibration when the lens is fully zoomed out. I really like the strap lugs on this camera. They're very simple. A lot of the DSLRs use a different style, which I don't prefer. The battery and memory card are stored on the grip side under the camera. I think it works pretty well in this case because it's so far over. Even if you have some type of quick release plate on the camera, it shouldn't interfere with opening that door. Besides having a lot of buttons, it also has a lot of ports, which is nice to see. It does have the mic port, does have a dedicated cable release port, the HDMI, the USB, all good there. It has a built-in flash, which is really interesting to see how it works. It's large, but it gets up high enough that it should work for a decent amount of the wider range of the zoom. Also, it has the hot chew, so you can easily use a dedicated flash if you want to do that. Electronic viewfinder is an organic LED type, which is good for contrast. Using the camera handheld is pretty challenging at the longer focal lengths. It is a very front-heavy design once it zooms all the way out. So it's going to be difficult kind of focusing on holding it steady. You want to put your hand as far out as you can in that case to really get it not moving too much. Even with the optical stabilization, you will have a challenging time getting things steady. 
However, I did get some nice shots, I think, indoors at the full zoom. It's just pretty challenging. As for image quality, you do have a very small sensor and throughout the zoom range you have some smaller apertures as well. Not an ideal situation for image quality. There are some other challenges. Any type of variation in temperature in the atmosphere between you and your subject will add some weird effects to your images. It's something you can't avoid and it really is not specific to this camera but it's just something you have to deal with. So you get some shimmering, you get some weird warping in the photos, potentially, depending on the conditions outside. Nice thing about this camera, you can shoot RAW format. Just looking at the images between the JPEGs and the RAWs, there's a serious improvement. I see a lot of blotchiness, a lot of very not great JPEGs, but in the RAWs I see some potential. You can really eke out a little bit of quality from those RAWs, I think, with some effort. Even so, you still have a lot of color noise and other issues because the sensor is so small and the apertures are small at that long zoom. Settings wise, this camera has so many options. Of course, with a bridge camera like this, on the higher ends, they put a lot into it. You have a lot of AF modes, high low, pre shoot, cache, which is nice to see. So when you press a button, you can use images beforehand. You have face priority, spot, normal, wide, subject tracking, target finding. You can have a lot of stuff to mess around with in this camera. One interesting setting that I did notice is that it has a startup zoom position. Turn on the camera and it'll jump right to whatever focal length you want to do. That's pretty interesting and convenient. This is a very special case camera. It gives you an amazing lens to really get far. There are drawbacks, of course, with just any type of lens that gives you that amount of range, but it's fun to mess around with. It gives you a lot of options just to even look around. You don't even have to take photos. You can use this as some type of spotting scope if you wanted. It's a very interesting and unique special purpose camera. With that smaller sensor, I think there are a lot of other options out there that don't give you as much range, but give you a lot higher quality. In a bridge camera, the Sony ones with the 1 inch sensors and large fast lenses, the Panasonic ones, those are things that I would definitely consider when thinking about a camera like this. But this one is so novel and so unique, it is an interesting one to check out. That was a look at the Nikon Coolpix P1000, again thanks to Camacraft in Rockford, Illinois for letting me try this out at their shop. I'm Scott from Trophy Bonsai, hope you enjoyed this video, if you did enjoy it, please consider subscribing, that helps me out a lot. Likes and shares on social media help out a lot as well. Thanks again.